look at this. Look The navy in the white is Pauline Trigère, 1967, and the one on the left is Norman Morrell, 1966. 1985 wool coat. <coughs> wool coat and scarf, 1985. White and tan, striped wool, cape, dress, and scarf, 1985. <coughs> Gray wool jacket and skirt with silk print blouse, 1963. Brown sheath dress, short check jacket, 1958. Gray, black, tweed jacket, wool, dress, and dress with um, fur trim. Red wool suit, 1990. All the others are Norales. Evening Ensemble 1964, black silk crepe beaded jacket, uh, crepe trousers and turban on loan from Pauline Fougere. <laughs> Evening Ensemble black wool jumpsuit, black and white hounds, tooth jacket, rhinestone bib on loan from Holy Treasure. The rest are Norrells. It's peeled by hand and then done by hand again. 
It's the same fabric, you see, it's one piece. Oh my goodness. Now they do it in Italy in the machine. Mm -hmm. But here we used to do it by hand, so they peel it out and then the fabric is sewn together again. So it's one piece. Uh -huh. Uh, everybody wants that coat. That's the one that would be my first fabulous. choice. Love that. That's my first choice. You see, that's the same thing. It's also a double face. See? Oh, yeah. I don't see any seam anywhere. Yeah. 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 See? It's clean finish. No seam. It's all done by hand. Like this. And the color. Gorgeous. This is your favorite. So what, well, what you, so you have numbers, I yes, see. Yeah, come, come up. The, actually, the exhibition starts in the other, in the other room. This is That's right so the Oh my God, I miss it so much. This one you own? This no. one I wore all the time. But this one is actually from Mrs. Auerbach. You don't have yours anymore. I don't have anything, but I had one. You know when I wore it, I'll tell you exactly, the first time I went to Chicago to beat a mini opera, I left New York on a Labor Day weekend, and Chicago didn't have Labor Days, so it came later. And when the door of the plane opened, I thought I was in the fire because it was so hot. Oh. The airplanes were not there. <laughs> right. And I wore this with a fur at the bottom. Oh. The luncheon at the big uh, hotel there, That's everybody right. was in spring. I mean, it was the first. I was in it like this. <laughs> <laughs> now, that, no, that's so cute. Thank you. Good. I'm so pleased you're happy. <laughs> that's all I wanted you to be happy. <laughs> Smashing. Now, can you tell me about this? This was this was cut. This was was this full length? This dress, or where did this dress no, come? No, no, just like this. Oh, oh I thought it was cut. No, okay. I it. You sure did. Yeah. This is you. This is, this is, is this for you. You will. <laughs> you will. Yes. That's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What we did is we treasure around this side. Well, on that side. Oh, for smart people. This is cheap. This is just, it's so you. Well, you see, I've got this. And look at this. Did you see it's a short, but it doesn't look too bad. It just, it's a short one. I, you, you notice how, how low the neckline got? <laughs> it's okay. I, I, oh. I loosened it at the back of the neck so we could slide the, That's so it's very, it's it's they call it, what am I going to do? But it works. The pants were too short. Oh, right? They say to the mannequin, bend your knees and they don't budge. So where did you get all of this? Well, this is, these are our stock mannequins. The do Adele Rootstein. Um, they're the same mannequins. No, who gave you this place? Um, it's right on the help. <laughs> it, came, it came in 1957. That's why I think it's, that's why I think it's for sure. It had, it said on it. Sure. Yeah, I said that. Oh, you said it was a dark yeah. green silk evening New, dress. New Burger. Yeah. Mrs. Hayes New Burger. They were friends of the Ribicoffs, as far as I know. And you made the you made the dress, y'all. If you could take a look, especially. No, look at this. No, no it was a show. This was. That's no. not treasure. Maybe, maybe this. That's not treasure. But this. Yeah. Was not shortened. No, this is Oh, that's, that's, it's the quality of the fabric. You see, that's, that's the thing that makes it. Mm. The fabric first, and then the workmanship. This, this is our little game. Here you are. This is my What we did was, we'll put down ways to recognize your things that are special. You know, the things that are so special for Trujillo. This is Yes. Yeah, this is Bernison. Bernison. And that dress is fabulous. I don't know where it went. The dress. So, uh, now that's the same. That's that. Yeah. Except the pens is in the skirt. Oh, wow. Mm. So, so we put this down as clues. 
so that people who didn't want to read labels could look at the clothes and figure I out see. whose clothes they were. And we did the same thing for Mr. Norell. Yeah. We put down the little clues that he uses. Yes, both, right, Judy? It is both. This is certainly a joint effort, yes. So it won't do. Roger. I've never met him. Did you, is it dated? Would you date it? That would be wonderful. Uh, December. Well, nine. nine. No, is it nine? Yes, nine. December. Nine. Perfect. We owe it to a few people. Number one, Ann Howard and Rosie Libowitz, who worked so hard to make tonight so successful. Jean Pearson, helping write all those invitations with her wonderful committee. Sibylla Brewer, who is our reservation person. Thank you all. And I think this is a winning combination, don't you? A magic night. And we can, I think, attribute we hope to we two things. We can do it again. Oh, we, we sure will. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I think because we have a special guest of honor, we know Pauline Trichier, preeminent American designer, along with two wonderful hosts, Pamela and Roger Friedman opening their doors tonight. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'd like my pleasure to introduce Pam to you right now. Well, we, we really want to thank you so much for coming because um, some of you have been in this room longer than the furniture that's in it. <laughs> our, our entire house came together, came this week. We moved in in July, and this was the week that all the furniture was coming. So we were thrilled. We were that's a thrill for the snow, but it is a winter wonderland outside for sure. And Roger and I are just so thrilled. To, this is the first of what we hope will be many wonderful occasions here. Uh, this is our new room in the, in the older house, and we've added this room, which obviously holds more people than we thought. Um, but I just want to tell you a quick story, and then I'll, I'll turn it over to Carol. Um, uh, we might have turned down an invitation to host something tonight because of the deadlines that uh, I mentioned. But when I heard it was to honor Ms. Treger, it was an immediate yes. Uh, my family has always loved your work. My great aunts, uh, B and Ethel Cole, from Hartford originally, wore Miss Treger's clothes all the time, bought them at Martha's, and my grandmother was a great devotee also, and this is my mom. <laughs> so my mom has discovered in her closet this wonderful coat that we have. <laughs> and it has been confirmed tonight as a uh, Treasure design, which we are thrilled about because it's been relined several times from a lot of use. So uh, we're, we're just thrilled to have all of you. And you know, in memory of my my dear family, uh, we welcome you, and we welcome you. Thank you. Here, here. Yeah. Here, here. Shall I ask of a question? Of course, you can. going to give her. it to Carol. <laughs> The Wait a minute. Yeah. If you wear it, okay. If you don't, give it to her. She wears it. She oh. my mom wears it. <laughs> she wears it. But it's we're thrilled. So, but she does. Well, we just had it relined again. So, you know. That's. And I used to wear it in New York City. So it was great. It was a wonderful, rich discovery just tonight. That's what we're <laughs> so, Carol, could you like to say a couple wore, words now? Nothing ever wore it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it looks brand yeah. new. It does. Yeah. Yes. And this is so very typical. This is so very typical. I can't get treasures out of people's closets because they keep <laughs> wanting to wear them. But uh, we have a, a wonderful collection. But if you've got treasures, I've got an eye on you. So. <laughs> um, actually, 
pulling Treger needs no introduction, and you didn't really come here to listen to me tonight, but I did want to say a few, a few words. Pauline was born in France and came to this country in the late 30s. Um, 50 years in the, in the garment industry business designing clothes. And uh, that's what you can tell them about those 50 I years. <laughs> I just want to say that she has been honored uh, with Cody Awards, the first one coming 1949, then a return award in 51, and finally when you win so many Cody's to get you sort of off the line and on the shelf, they put you into the Hall of Fame. And Pauline was made the Hall of Fame in 1959. Um, a couple of years ago, they started the Fashion Walk of Fame on 7th Avenue. So if you're down on 7th Avenue between 35th and 41st Street, there are plaques in the sidewalk and they're going to honor really only 24 very special designers. And Ms. Treger is one of them. And that was me, my name. Yeah. Don't name. bring your dog. <laughs> that Hall of Fame, she said, I did not think I would ever let anyone on 7th Avenue walk over me. <laughs> yes, I think you should because we have many people in the back that would like to hear. You can, well, I have a bad voice anyway. So use the mic. Like, you want me to? If you're comfortable with that. It's, it's on. I'll adjust the volume. Can you hear me better? No? no. It doesn't work. <laughs> and now? Yes. Is it yes. better? Yes. yes. Well, thank you very much, Carol. First of all, when I heard about... I, I came here... I don't remember where. I had a show, two shows, at your museum. But I came here when you had a fabulous store named I.J. Fox with Mrs. Auerbach. And you see both sets, so I go back to them. But today, I got lost three times coming back to Hartford. We went to East Hartford, West Hartford. I didn't know there were so many Hartford. <laughs> I tell you, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much, ma'am. And to see your beautiful home. I have to get the whole structure after, yes? Okay, I want to see the bedrooms and everything. <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Uh, anyway, I think the only mistake here is that you should have chairs or sit on the floor. The chairs are ordered, though. Oh. Okay, so have patience. You know, the decorators, like... Anyway, uh, Carol told you that I came here. First of all, I'm going to finish up my series of awards, because for the girl that came here very young, for a little while, I got every award available. The Neiman Marcus Award, the Cotton Award, the Lace Award, just name them all. But, and then the Walk of Fame Award. But then, next week, the 13th of December, 2001, I'm getting probably the last that I will ever get. I'm getting the French Legion d'Honneur. Wow. I'm an American from here to there, no more French with the accent. I really am. I'm a New Yorker besides. I wasn't born in France, I was born in Paris. Remember that? I was born in Paris many, many, many years ago because I was 93 years old three weeks ago. So I'm an old lady and I went through a lot of things. I came here in New York, in America, rather. In 1937, I came here with the only husband I ever had, I had one, and two children. I still have the children. <laughs> <laughs> and I came here for six weeks on a visitor visa to go to Santiago de Chile. What reason why I can You know, Hitler was coming out. We came here for six weeks. When I took one trip, the 6th of January, 1937, 
on a double-decker bus, you know those big bus from 50s, you all know New York, I'm sure, <laughs> from 57th Street down to 34th Street, and make a brief. And we did the avenue, both way east and west, and I saw things I never thought existed. A big star named... Uh, Anyway, I saw eight dresses in a room, two blue and white, two blue and white, two blue, and then I looked and then it said, we bought the dress at uh, Jean Patou, we paid two hundred twenty-five dollars. Our copy, nineteen seventy-five. <laughs> two blue dresses with white color. We bought the dress at Lanvin. We paid one hundred ninety-eight dollars. Our copy, ninety. Every. Well, in France, in Paris, we just came. We would be in prison if you say that you copied anything. <laughs> Until I got into Saint Fifth Avenue, where the windows were, they were that there, and it was freezing cold, January the seventh. I had a little hat that was flying everywhere. And I saw in the windows dummies, mannequins, with big, big sun in the back, in bathing suit. I said, they're crazy. I'm not. <laughs> what is this? I never heard about Florida until we came to 57th, to 57th Street, east and west. And in that was like here. You had stores and stores that were fabulous. I looked at my husband. I said, you want to go to Chile? I'm not, and that's why I stayed. <laughs> I make the story very short because it was a little more complicated than that. <coughs> we finally stayed, and in 1942, alone after a breakage with my marriage, I started to make my own clothes. I never learned. Today, well, I don't like to say I teach. Yes, maybe I do. A critic at Parsons and at FIT and so on. But my education was only my father's Welcome, because he was a tailor, my mother was a dressmaker, so I saw them, and that's where I learned. Anyway, I made my first 11 dresses, and my brother, my niece, Jane she oh, you're there. Her father was my partner, and my delicious brother, he was terribly elegant, very chic. He took those 11 dresses in a suitcase. No plane, of course, forget that. No train was too expensive. And he traveled, and he began, that's what he did. He came to Hartford, he came to Philadelphia. And in those days, there were ladies, not big stores, who owned their own shops. Dan Duskin in Philadelphia, Becky Blum in Chicago, Amelia Gray on the coast, who knew their customers. That's where my brother, Robert Trigère, started selling the Trigère clothes. And this started my career. The question that has been asked thousands and thousands of times, Miss Trigère or Pauline, why did you become a designer? I said, designer? I didn't understand it. I don't know what it meant. I really didn't, because you have a big difference in French, just a couturier or designer, that's something else. I didn't. I had to feed two children, and my mother and my brother was my partner. I worked, and I worked seven days a week, never killed anybody to work hard. I worked and then we started. 1942 was my first, then we started a collection. And little by little, we established a certain style. There is something that was probably ingrained in me, something that's called quality. Even in my house in the country, I don't know about you, because my furniture I bought everywhere. At the Fimi Fimi Market on 6th Avenue, all, but what I bought was quality. What I made in my clothes was quality. I mean, that coat must be 30 years old. I bought the best fabric available. Not American, because they didn't do it. We, we still don't do it. It had to be Italian, French, Swiss, English. The lining may have been for me. And the best tailors, the best tailor, the best workmanship I could have. And then we cut them properly. We made good seams, we made everything by hand. And then I don't sketch. That's another thing I must tell you. I teach today 
at school where I have to see 12 sketches, you know. And I asked many times, what is it for? I don't know. Uh, what, what, what are you going to do for? What material? I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure either because I never sketch. I take the fabric and I cut directly, which is a different kind of thing. Uh, Jean Lanvin, when there was a Fionnet, I'm not trying to emulate them, but that's what I've done. I still do today. And I do a show here or there, and I love to do that for you too. I take a piece of fabric and I have a model next to me, and I take my big shears made for me in France for my hand, and I cut and everybody goes like this. Especially the <laughs> no, the ball relax. So I think there is a difference in the thing that I do because in a sketch you can put a piece of, you know, a tracing and then you give it, there is a very interesting article in the, the bazaar of this week on the work of Mr. Lagerfeld for Coco Chanel. Did you read that? Yes. Where what you do is to take the sketch of the designer and you get a very talented, experienced <coughs> assistant who makes a toile, you know, a muslin. And from there on, you cut a paper pad. We did that too. Today, you make a sketch and they put it to a computer and God knows what happened. I, don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't know because I don't even have an answering machine. I mean, <laughs> so it's a very different kind of thing. I did clothes, first of all, with the respect of my fellow women. And what I learned after buying my fabric, the best, what I learned is taking trips. With my brother, he traveled, I traveled. But I went and do what we called fashion shows, trunk shows, everywhere. Chicago, whatever. Here. I met the customers. I met you, short, tall, big. And I saw what I've done on them, and I knew Pauline don't ever do that again, because I learned looking at you, my dear ladies. And I learned a lot. And what really pleased me very much is talking, coming back season after. Pauline, remember the coat you sold me? I want a dress to go with that. I mean, I have to tell you a funny little story. <clears throat> I made a little memorial speech two weeks ago in Richfield, Connecticut. Mr. Larry Aldrich, a great man who gave the museum, was in the dress business. And I remember we, we were in Philadelphia having an interview with somebody and they asked me what I thought. I said, well, I think a woman who should buy something that she likes and keep it and buy again next season something to go with it and so on. When I went out, he said to me, you're completely crazy. I said, why? He said, that's stupid what you're saying. Let her buy something every week. <laughs> so I said, you see, he's got the museum and I still put my weeds in my garden. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I think I was right because every time I meet someone who has a treasure coat, or dress or whatever, they still wear it. So, what can I tell you? I can tell you a lot of things. If you ask me questions, I will tell you whatever I can. Tell us about the Golden Violin Collection. The Golden Violin Collection came to me, this is two girls who decided to honor their father and mother, who probably stopped not walking. So they two girls who decided to do something for older people like me. <laughs> so, the first thing I did was to do a cane, a red cane, instead of a terrible black cane. It sells like mad. Then I made a walking thing to go over the walking chair, you know, without, without, without buttons, just Velcro, things like that. And I did uh, for two pairs of glass, lots of things. And I've done a fabulous little bed jacket, which is in the next catalog. And I made a shawl and something very good. I went to a home where women are in wheelchairs and their skirts are here and their socks. Are. So I made something like a lap robe and a <coughs> scarf to match. I hope that will sell. I don't know. That's for next category. And it's on the web, or what do you call it? On the web. Yes. Yes. On the web. On the web. And it is on the catalog. And that's it. I, when I closed my place <coughs> 13 years ago, maybe, I still kept doing this kind of stuff, scarves and stuff like that. And of course, 
my favorite perfume, which is called Liquid Shake. And you can still get on the web dot com. You get the name and you get the Liquid Shake, which I brought you, but I don't know what it is. I do. You do? I'll show you. I'll show you. Otherwise, I try to occupy my time by doing that's the liquid chic. Yes. I'm enjoying it. And I hope Me? Not, oh, yes. Oh. Not only you, but your husband. Because <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. The perfume is not only for you. It's for the man next to you. <laughs> Otherwise, don't wear it. <laughs> Thank you. Anything I can answer, please? Don't be shy. Ask me anything. I'll try to answer. What advice do you give for senior citizens and dressing? Excuse me? What advice do you give for senior citizens and the way they dress? Today? <laughs> yes. I don't think anybody dresses today. You dress today. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, the kingdom of the jeans is taking over. I'm sorry? The kingdom of the oh, jeans. Oh, yeah. And it's okay, nothing wrong about jeans. Everybody should have a pair of jeans. But to see jeans in a theater, paying $95 for a seat at Louis Jeans with an unpressed t shirt, that drives me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We agree. We agree. I heard you had a jewelry line at one time. Yeah. 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 Tell me something about it. Yes. This, we still do the little chicken ring. When you're lonely, you talk to him, he doesn't answer. <laughs> Did you design the jewelry? Yes. Oh, this collar, this fashion. We still do that, yes. Mm -hmm. I tell you something, except for shoes and bathing suit, everything I wear, I wear, I own. I don't wear anybody else's shoes <laughs> so far, <laughs> unless I get myself changed size, which is difficult sometimes. I'll have another drink <laughs> to prove the country. <laughs> Designs are so current now. The designs that are in the Cosmo Textile Show or the Wadsworth uh, Avenue. You could just put them on and walk out the door and be perfectly chic. Saying that the designs in the exhibition now look like you could just put them on. I won't let you. <laughs> put them on and wear them now. Well, I'm I'm very proud of that. I told you it's because first of all it was. My respect of the feminine body, as I draped on a woman, I didn't make crazy clothes. If I did, whatever I did on a woman's body, I knew if my mother was working like this, and I looked at her in the mirror, I said, Gee, I'm going in the wrong direction. So there was something to work directly on a woman's body that really taught me, anyway, to do different things. And I didn't make crazy clothes. I never made, I never did meet clothes with the belly button showing, not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe next season. <laughs> you were the first one to do a jumpsuit, weren't you? I think so. You know, when you say first, I don't want to be sued. No, I, said, <laughs> I did that in the first reverse of the capes, too. I also did for Mrs. Blum in Chicago, we made everything with scarves. And she said to me, and she used to come on a Sunday because she worked six days a week. And I remember opening my show at 7th Avenue on a Sunday morning just to show the clothes and I put a scarf. She said, don't bother making scarves because the American woman. I said, they will teach her, Mrs. Blum. <laughs> and we did. Now Malta, on the other hand, we never buy a dress without a scarf, because she was cold at night. I mean, the air conditioning, so she always wore any dress for Indica to have a scarf. So you learn, you know, a few things that you do because of the change. It's like pants. And for a while, I thought pants were not, but you cannot live without a pair of trousers today, because if you travel, and the thing that we did was very successful was a reversible coat, to tone, a skirt, a pair of trousers, and a blouse. So you went to San Francisco from New York, you come in at the airport, change for the lunch, or the, I did something that was like a weekend, something. 
which was political and it's still available today. I think some of you brought more treasure pieces. I know you yeah, said you did. The grindstone goods. Come on, don't hide it. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go get it. I left it in the other room. I, 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 I didn't bring the dress. I thought that would be. Bring the dress. No, so you know why I didn't bring the dress? I don't want you to see the difference of today and yesterday. <laughs> and some people are wearing trichers. Yes. 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 Raise your hand. Step forward. Come yes. out. Yes. Okay. 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 Okay.